Well, Aaron, we are at Resolve Maritime Academy, and this is a full-blown ship simulator, and Brad Bolt is here to tell us about what we're looking at. So tell us what, what we can see here. Everything you'd see on the bridge of a modern ship, Rosa, radars, everything else. Now, we can actually feel like we're actually on a ship, and you can see the waves. I can blow the horn here. Yeah, radars, electronic charts, all the control systems for the vessel. Now, one of the other things that we can do is we can list this ship. So let's start doing that slowly. Sure. And as we take a look at that, look at the horizon. You can really get a sense of what this feels like. And at this point, you would think, okay, the ship is in trouble. Yeah, if the vessel's stuck like this, definitely you know something is something's wrong. Now, we got a very rare look at what could be happening below deck. Take a look. <laughs> On a ship, this is the universal sign of trouble. Inside this model ship hull, instructors from Resolve Maritime Academy train crew how to prevent a deadly disaster at sea. Like the sinking of the passenger ferry in South Korea. Investigators say the nearly 7,000 ton ship sank in about two and a half hours. 476 people were inside when a boy on board made the first call for help at 8.52 a.m. local time. The ship's crew made a distress call about three minutes later at 8.55. The crew's response is critical to preventing disaster. In this scenario, water is rushing in from an unknown source. Water is starting to rise. What do you do? Main thing is just to get away from the damage. Get outside, let the crew know if you did find damage, make sure the crew knows about it. They use anything they can to plug the holes. How much time do you really have to get out or to assess the situation when water really starts just gushing in? Well, it all depends on the scenario, um, how deep the hole is inside the water. Naturally, the deeper the hole in the water, the more water pressure is going to be pushing in. If I'm a passenger that's on a ship and I'm not very familiar with the ship, what do you suggest that I do to get to safety? Best thing to get to safety is follow the walls, follow them, get to a ladder, get, to, get outside. I always recommend getting to the main deck. And so why would you want to go outside? Of course, because the lifeboats are there. Now, also joining us uh, is Joe Farrell, and he's the founder and the CEO of this company. Now, what do captains need to do? What training do they need to do to be at the helm of these ships on a regular basis? Well, it's a time and a time and rate situation. You spend so much time at sea, and then you get different qualifications, and then you graduate to different to a captain's level. The irony of training at this point in time around the world, there's no requirement for recurrent training, believe it or not, Rosa. From a guy time his guy's got a captain's license or a girl, they don't have to go back to training. This simulator is built for some of the training of the cruise ship lines that, and, and uh, operators that, that are doing it on their own. They're starting which is, with current which training. Is a, yeah, yeah, which is a great point because, Aaron, that's the whole reason why to have simulators like this so you can practice those drills that can take people to safety.